Hey everyone, Orion here, and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. This is another heavily requested topic, and so I'm really excited to talk to you about dental cement in this video. So there are six main types of dental cement that I'll be talking about today. Three zinc ones, a glass ionomer, a resin cement, and then a mix between those two. So cements connect the underlying tooth structure to a fixed prosthesis, like an onlay, a crown, or a bridge. Cements are also called looting agents because their primary function is to loot or glue two different things together. So the first one is zinc oxide eugenol, and it's actually the third time we've seen this material come up. The first time was that it was a primary ingredient in gutta percha and root canal filler. The second time is that it was found in the periodontal pack used after periodontal surgery. And now we're seeing it a third time being used as a temporary cement. So in all of these applications, we're seeing its ability to soothe, in this case, to soothe the pulp. Now remember, provisional or temporary cements, like zinc ox oxide eugenol, have this eugenol component, which inhibits the polymerization of resin. So we need to remove as much as possible with an excavator, explorer, or wet cotton pellet after taking the provisional crown off before proceeding to a permanent cement, particularly if that cement contains resin. So. Temp bond is one of the exam the commercial examples of a zinc oxide eugenol temporary cement. So zinc phosphate was introduced in 1850, is widely considered as the gold standard cement, and has the longest history of all the dental cements. So it's very acidic in nature because it contains phosphoric acid which can irritate the pulpal tissues. This is otherwise known as post-cementation pulpal sensitivity. So you have a powder which contains zinc oxide, which acts as the base, and a liquid which contains acid, including phosphoric acid as its main ingredient, which makes the initial pH so acidic. So you mix the two together, and you have an acid-base reaction in order to activate the cement. You do this mixing on a chilled glass slab due to it being an exothermic reaction. It gives off a lot of heat, so it's best to mix the materials on a chilled glass slab. The cement does not have a chemical bond to underlying two structure, so it's simply a looting agent. It seals and glues the crown to the tooth, but does not chemically bond to the tooth structure. So the third cement we'll talk about is zinc polycarboxylate. This was introduced in 1969, and you mix, again, you mix a powder base and a liquid acid together. So it's another acid-base reaction. This one, however, has a weak chelation bond to the tooth not to the restoration, but to the tooth, the calcium mineral in the tooth structure. So it chemically bonds to tooth structure with minimal pulpal irritation. So it has some improvements over the zinc phosphate material. Now introduced in 1972, we had the glass ionomer cement. You're once again mixing a powder and liquid together in an acid-base reaction, but there are some additional benefits. The glass ionomer material not only forms a weak chelation bond to tooth structure, but it also serves as a reservoir for fluoride. So it can basically soak up fluoride from toothpaste and varnish and even fluoride in the drinking water, and in doing so, it recharges itself and then releases the fluoride slowly over time. And the theory is that this can help prevent recurrent caries around the margin of a crown that has used this cement. All right, the fifth cement is resin modified glass ionomer. This was introduced in 1979 
and it's the most commonly used cement today. This is Rely-X Luting Plus, the 3M's uh, resin modified glass ionomer on the market. And this cement has a higher strength and lower solubility than glass ionomer. So again, continuing to improve on the cement formula. The higher strength and lower solubility in the oral cavity comes from the addition of this resin component. It's not to be used with all ceramic crowns due to expansion from water absorption. The exception to this rule is zirconia crowns, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. But overall, this is a fantastic cement. And our last category is the resin cement. This one offers the most compressive strength of all of them. It bonds to the dentin II structure, and it comes in light cure, chemical cure, and dual cure varieties. So what's the difference between these three resin cements below? Well, Rely-X Unisem and Rely-X Ultimate are both dual cure cements, which means they have a light cure and a chemical cure component. The Rely-X Veneer Cement on the bottom is a light cure cement only. So the Rely-X Unisem, we'll start with that one, is a self-adhesive cement, which means no additional bond or adhesive is required, but the bond strength to two structure that it offers is not as strong as its counterpart, being the Rely-X Ultimate Cement. Rely-X Ultimate is an adhesive resin cement and is used in combination with an adhesive like Scotch Bond or OptiBond to achieve bond strengths that exceed those of Rely-X Unisem. And like I said before, the veneer cement is light cure only. And the reason why it's heavily favored for anterior veneers, as it mentions in its name, is because light cure cement is more color stable than dual cure and chemical cure cements. And this is an excellent boards question. Basically, a chemical cure or dual cure cement, which is a, again, a combination of light and chemical, experiences decomposition of its benzoyl peroxide component by a tertiary amine, which causes staining and discoloration of the cement over time. And this would show through the thin veneer and mess up the shade, hence why we use a light cure cement, which does not suffer from this discoloration problem. All right, so here again is listed our six cements that we just talked about. And as we go down from one to six, the cements are generally better quality, but are a little bit more difficult to use. And I use the word, the term technique sensitivity. So resin is more difficult because it requires better isolation, light curing, etching, silane application, things I'll address in the next slide. So it's a bit more technique sensitive than say the zinc oxide eugenol. Now, as we go in the other direction, there's a trend towards higher oral solubility and lower strength. So that is basically the two big trends to remember when thinking about these six cements. All right, so let's go over, uh, and I think this is a really, really helpful topic to talk about in terms of breaking down our crowns into categories, breaking down our cements into categories, and trying to figure out when we should use which cements with which crowns. So we can break down our possible crowns into four basic categories. So this will be for our crowns categories. All right, so we have zirconia, which is a ceramic, but has no silica component or no glass. The metal crowns, and I include both full gold, cast gold crowns, and porcelain fused to metal crowns in this category. And the reason I do that is because the metal of the PFM crown is actually what's contacting the tooth and contacting the cement. That metal component is the inner layer. 
So I'm including it in an overarching metal umbrella category. The third is lithium disilicate, which is a glass ceramic, otherwise known as Emax, Emax crowns. And the fourth is feldspathic porcelain, which is the most aesthetic option, but also mechanically the weakest of the four, and is generally reserved for veneers and anterior crowns. Now, we really have two viable cement options. So these are our two main cement categories. And the zinc ones aren't typically used routinely today, except for zinc oxide eugenol, which is used as a temporary cement. So our two categories of cement are resin and looting cements. And the simplest way to remember this, and this is not for every case, but in most cases, resin cement should be used with options three and four, and looting cements should be used with options one and two. And this is because you can take advantage of the chemical bond that resin has with the tooth and with the silica component of the glass ceramics. And since we won't get a chemical bond to non-silica ceramics or metal, we prefer the looting cement with the first two categories because this cement at least offers the benefits of fluoride release and less post-procedural sensitivity. So that's the most basic and generalized way to remember which cements to use with which crowns. And I think this is a very, uh, a very fair assessment and uh, is clinically applicable and appropriate. So I also listed the layers in order of application for using resin cement. If we're in the enamel layer of the tooth, say for a veneer, which is again, utilizing that intra enamel preparation, we wanna etch with phosphoric acid. Otherwise, we don't want to etch the dentin. So we start with the dentin of the tooth or the enamel that has been etched, and then we place primer and or a bonding agent. On the crown side, we, you have the silica containing crown, you etch the glass infiltrated ceramic with that hydrofluoric acid. So we're not using phosphoric acid, we're using hydrofluoric acid for the crown. Then you treat the inside of the crown with silane coupling agent. And then we fill with a resin cement and seat the crown on the tooth. So the silane is functioning to improve the bond strength to the crown. And that's basically the best way to break down the layers in order of application. You're treating the tooth side with either etch and or some primer or bond, and you're treating the crown with its own etch and silane, and then cementing both the tooth and crown together. So the same steps would occur if, say, a veneer were to fracture and you had to bond it back on. That would be another example of utilizing this order in layer of application. So here's a summary of the four crown categories and which cements typically to use for each type of crown. And I uh, added in here that for feldspathic porcelain, if we're doing veneers or anterior crowns, we want to stick to a light cure resin cement like that veneer cement so that that's not uh, experiencing that discoloration that comes with dual cure cements. All right, thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you found this video helpful in your studies. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out my Patreon page. A huge thank you to Michael Raja and all of my patrons for their continued support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions. So go check that out. The link will be in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.